Hello, and today is another look at Motormax, and specifically their um, uh, American Graffiti series of diorama. I, again, just like the last one, I don't think this one is... Actually, I don't know. I haven't seen American Graffiti, so I wouldn't really be able to tell. But uh, if the uh, last one was the uh, Crown Vic is anything to go by, I think this is just something they made of themselves, and doesn't really have anything to do with the uh, George Lucas movie. Um, but I wouldn't really know. This is series from series three, and the diorama is called Downtown. Comes with a 1956 um, Ford T Bird, Ford Thunderbird. So at, at least um, time wise, this might as well be in the movie. I don't know. The uh, American Graffiti was released in 73, if I remember correctly, two years after George Lucas's directorial debut, THX 1138. I do need to watch both of these movies. I definitely need to watch THX because um, I do love sci-fi, especially older stuff, and George Lucas in, uh, in his early days was very, very creative. Um, Star Wars obviously is very, very great, but like, man, do you remember the last time George Lucas made, well, I was about to say make good movies, but do you remember when George Lucas made movies? Like, what was his last directorial? It might well just, might just well be Star Wars. I don't think he personally directed um, Howard the Duck, I don't think. And he directed part of Red Tails, which was, sorry, awful. Um, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, he had a lot of involvement with. I know he, um, he did, uh, Indiana Jones, but I personally, I believe it's more Spielberg than Lucas, but anyway. Uh, oh god, I forgot, he directed, he personally directed all of the prequels, sorry, my... That's either dementia or is it my brain actively trying to forget the Star Wars prequels? You know, like people say, like Disney films are the downfall of Star Wars. It's like, no, man. I mean, I don't blame you if you haven't seen the prequels or just never rewatch them. But no, they're the prequels are much, much, much. I don't have a lot of love for the Disney movies, but at least they have good effects. They look good. They're exciting. They're not like people walking down a hall and talking to each other. Um, it's like 80% of the movie is just a like boring exposition and quote-unquote world-building and the rest is just... And there's like 20 minutes of um, super fake CGI action that everyone loses their mind for. I don't get it. Uh, but anyway, I'm not here to talk about Star Wars or movies, am I? I'm, oh, by the way, more, uh, more hot take. I watched... Uh, uh, what is it? A Quiet Place yesterday. I don't get the fuss. Um, I like the creature design, but a lot of the, um, it's a really interesting setup, but the, um, a lot of the, um, um, plot and details don't really hold up under scrutiny. It's really nicely, it's really nicely shot. Whoever the DP was re really, really did it. It's very atmospheric. Some really, really cool looking shots. I like the creature design. I think I might have said it already. I, I do watch horror movies a lot of times purely for creature designs. I just feel like John Krasinski after uh, his incredible success with um, The Office is trying to distance himself from that kind of character and he's just trying so hard to be this like gruff military man, gruff action hero and just uh, to me this basically feels like a, um, a uh, vanity piece. Which I don't get. I don't get. I mean, there are vanity pieces that are well done. I can't think of one right now. But being a vanity piece doesn't mean it's necessarily bad. And I don't think a quiet place is bad. But like, this is the equivalent. I I think this is kind of the movie equivalent of someone who needs to overcompensate by driving like the biggest pickup truck in the world. You know. But we're not here to talk about that either. Um. This is the uh, Ford Thunderbird that came from this set, 1956. It's nice and white, really cool colors. It's got lens headlights, although there's a little bit of a, I think, extra glue sticking out or extra paint, one of the two. Um, chrome grill back here as well. Um, it's got the logo right here. I think. It, might be the T-Bird logo. I'm not familiar with the Thunderbird. I don't have a lot of Thunderbirds. I do have like one Hot Wheels version, a basic one that isn't really this. Uh, it's so different. It doesn't really make sense to compare the two of them. And I do have a couple of uh, Hot Wheels for Thunderbird um, 
stock cars, but again, wouldn't really make sense for a comparison. It's really nicely painted, a really nicely detailed. It's got a, a plastic base. American Graffiti. Um, yeah, I do agree with Champion DJK, DJK when he said like he doesn't like having American Graffiti all on these cars. But this one, at least, I don't think I think it's not intrusive enough. And you see Thunderbird right here, really nicely detailed paints. Um, California Cal 700, sweet. Backlights here are just red paint. Uh, not too much to say about this model, but it's really nice. Nice. Um, it's very good looking. Okay. And on the underside, it's a plastic base again. It's screwed in, so it's very easy to customize. Um, number whatever, scale 164, 1956 for Thunderbird. And this is, again, my pet peeve. It's you don't call your stuff 164 if it's not true 164. It's just pushing, pushing the boundaries and make people have to start using words like true 164, real 164, actual, like, if it's not if it's not 164 don't call it 164 this one is obviously way too small well not way too small but a bit too small so don't do that and definitely don't um, don't put it on the base of the car which in my opinion is like a sacred co a sacred covenant just don't um, rubber tires it's like it looks really really good and as for the diorama, uh, the main piece of the diorama looks really nice. And you, like the last one, you can unscrew the whole thing from the base. A lot of the stuff you can poke out. I'll probably be better with acetone because it is glued down. And just like the last one, you can see these um, these dioramas. The cars are smaller than 164, but the figures are larger than 164. So it's uh, it, it makes it look a bit weird, although um, I think you might be able to compensate that a little bit by like, using cars with larger scales as well, for instance. Uh, I, I don't know, I actually haven't tried this before, so this might not complete, completely fail. Um, actually, I think it looks good, actually, because um, uh, the Fiat 500 and Hot Wheels is a bit too large. I mean... I say a bit too large, but like Hot Wheels is very clear they're not making true 164 models. Uh, they don't call their stuff 164, so I can't say it's too large. But yeah, I think this is a good-looking pair. The, uh, the the character might the figures might still be a little too big for the car, but it looks better. Um, but the thing is, because um, the car is so small, it's really hard to get any like true 164 models here. Let's see. Um, I mean, a lot of them won't make sense, but for instance, uh, if I can just get this, hmm, which one should I go for? Uh, let's go for Ferrari. Like the Ferrari, the small one, true 164, it's fine. Although it looks really out of place because there's a giant towering over it. Um, this Beetle again, well, Beetle looks a bit better. The care that the figure is not too tall over it. Um, yeah, so I think it's, again, it, it's still designed. I think this Thunderburst definitely looks best here, but, I mean, see how how tall the figure is in, in contrast to the model itself. It's a bit weird, but you can easily integrate a lot of these stuff into your own diorama. It's like a, it's almost like a part pack if you don't want to display it the way it is, which... Um, displaying it the way it is is pretty good looking in and of itself, but you, it definitely gives you a lot of customization opportunity. So I think it's, uh, it's probably going to be the last one I'm going to get unless I can get like the one with like the Fiero or the Pinto, which are two of the models I'm interested in, but they're, they're not being sold for like a price I would like. So I don't think that's happening anytime soon, but it's, it's nice to have, right? But there's also nothing on nothing to write home about exactly so um, that's my look at the motor max quote unquote 164 downtown diorama this is from american graffiti moments in time series three hope you enjoyed it and talk to you again soon bye bye